Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at finding the limit of a multivariable function. The function is xy over the square root of x squared plus y squared, and we want to find the limit as x and y both go to zero. So our strategy is, can we just plug the point in directly to the function? Well, let's see, zero, zero. Plug it in and get zero in the numerator, zero in the denominator. That's indeterminate. So no, we can't plug in this point. Um, to the function. So it's definitely not continuous there because that denominator is not defined. Show the limit does not exist as our second part of our strategy. So maybe um, the limit doesn't exist if we can't just plug it in. Well, let's see. Let's try to show that the limit does not exist. All right, so the limit has, let's say, x equals 0. So we try x equals 0. Then the limit would be 0 over square root of y squared as y goes to 0. Well, that would be 0. OK, well, that doesn't really show us anything. We can only claim that it doesn't exist if we get different limits through different paths. So let's try a different path to the origin. Um, namely, we'll try the, the line y equals 0. That's a path to the origin. So limit as x goes to 0 of 0 over square root of x squared. That's also 0. OK, well, both of these give us 0. That doesn't tell us anything necessarily. Let's keep going until we can try to maybe find a different limit through one of these paths that goes through the origin. So let's try y equals x. This is another path through the origin. So the limit as, we'll just say, x goes to 0 of, let's see, if y equals x, then this is x squared in the numerator. And the bottom, we get square root of 2x squared. So this is equal to the limit x squared over square root of 2 absolute value x as x goes to 0. Well, as x goes to 0 from the right, this is going to be 0. As x goes to 0 from the left, this is also going to be 0. So this limit is 0 again. So far, every path has given us a limit of 0. So maybe, just maybe, the limit is actually 0, and we need to show that it is 0 somehow. If we try maybe one more path, y equals x squared, see if we get 0 again. So this would be the limit as x goes to 0. And if we plug in y equals x squared here, we get uh, x cubed in the numerator. So x cubed over square root of, let's see, x squared plus x to the 4. So again, basically the power in the denominator is x squared. The power in the numerator is x cubed. We see that this limit is again going to be 0. So man, this looks like the limit's going to be 0, but it's, it's not really like obvious to show how it is 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to polar coordinates. So that's our third option or our third strategy. Part of our strategy is like switch everything to polar coordinates. So we're going to try switching to polar coordinates with x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and x squared plus y squared equals r squared at that point. All right, so if x and y are both going to 0, then where is the radius and the angle going? So that would imply that the radius is going to 0. So r comma theta is going to go to 0 comma theta. So if that's the case, then theta actually can be anything. r just has to go to 0 to make this xy pair go to 0, 0. So we're going to plug all this in to our limit and convert our limit to polar coordinates. So what that's going to be is limit as r theta goes to 0 theta, and x is r cosine theta y is r sine theta over square root of r squared. And we are going to assume that r is positive. Um, so we'll just take the square root of r squared to be r. So this is going to be the limit as r theta goes to 0 theta of r squared sine theta cosine theta over r. 
Well, one of these R's is going to cancel. And that's going to leave us with the limit as R theta goes to zero, so R goes to zero, of R sine theta cosine theta. So actually, it doesn't matter what theta is. As R goes to zero, this term is just going to go to zero. So this limit actually does equal zero if we just compute it directly in polar coordinates. Now, again, if we didn't have an R here, then we would not have a limit, basically, because this would not go to any particular value because theta could be anything. But because we have an R going to zero, theta going to theta, this term is going to go to zero. So this limit of this function is going to be zero, like we found through our examples. So examples don't prove the limit is zero, but it kind of indicates maybe that it is zero. You have to use something else to show that the limit actually is zero. And that's how we do it.